crazy mother. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second hour of the Exceptional Conservative Show, live for the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then to the tyrant. This is Open Heart, Closed Case Night, where we focus on public safety issues, uh, unresolved homicides, missing persons, teen suicides, and child abuse cases. Uh, for tonight, our focus is on the COVID-19, as it is a public health issue. Uh, and there is a gentleman who received my great adoration uh, as he elicited that response to his response to the city government, Washington, D.C., where the mayor of the city came down hard on the restaurants and small businesses, ordering them to close. And he exclaimed that there is no constitutional backing for what you do. Uh, now, he has since uh, apologized for the response uh, because it was taken as a negative in terms of the overall health of the community. But he, as a small business owner and manager of a small business, understands the direct cost, not the indirect cost that comes with tax revenue, the direct cost that comes when people receive edicts from government uh, and while they are a great, have a great affinity for it right up front, uh, on the back end of it, ladies and gentlemen, there's unemployment, there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes business closes, closing. So I want to introduce to some and present to others tonight uh, a man who understands what it takes to manage a business and make it happen. Tom Johnson, who is the managing partner of uh, Hill Restaurant Group, LLC. Uh, out of Washington, D.C., Capitol Hill, the hawk and dove many people will recognize. Uh, Tom, it's a tremendous pleasure to have this opportunity to talk with you tonight. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, first and foremost, let me give you the opportunity where you can talk with those who have tuned in tonight, uh, who are vilifying you and saying that you did not care about your employees, you didn't care about your customers. All you cared about was uh, to them. What do you wish to say? Well, it's an absolutely falsehood. I mean, you know, we, you know, my my statement wasn't the most graceful statement that I put out there, and it was taken out of context that I really didn't care about the Corona flu or what was going on in the community. Uh, we had taken the extra steps and necessary. We had extra people on sanitizing everything. And really what it was came down to is when her first initial order uh, would have, it was, it was, it was disproportionate to big business and small business. Uh, the bigger businesses, the 300, 400 seat, 200 seat restaurants, the hotels, everything like that, continue to operate pretty much normally where half my places are small places where I absolutely couldn't comply with the order. It just, I would just have to shut down and start furloughing employees. And no. that's pretty much the reason it went went out like that. If she, I had called the mayor's office on Sunday when she put the order out. Um, I voiced we voiced our concern along with several small business owners in the community that I know, and we told her just if you're going to do it, shut us down. So we'll get, you know, our employees will get help uh, immediately. If not, they have to wait to police to collect unemployment. They, you know, all everything it was just ridiculous. Now, because the way you were manifested in the media, and and none of us who uh, apply ourselves to civil liberties are looked upon with great delight in this particular time frame, is someone who was adamantly opposed um, to the mayor's role as leader of the city with emergency powers. If you could speak to that particular issue as well. Well, I think it was ill thought out. It was, 
it was not executed very well. Uh, we didn't have any time to adjust or, you know, it's just like, you know, these are the rules, follow them tomorrow. No time to adjust, no time to, you know, if she would have said, you know, hey, these are going to be the new rules coming out on Friday, you know, that might have been a little different, you know, it gave us time to readjust and, to what was going on or at least have a conversation with her about how it would affect us negatively. No. Tom, you're one of the managing partners. Uh, you are the managing partner of the Hill Restaurant Group uh, right there on yes. Capitol Hill. You see politicians uh, and leaders of the city on a daily basis in your particular restaurants. Did you have any clue whatsoever that such a catastrophe was headed your way as a small business owner? Absolutely not. It's been actually, it's, it's going to be devastating to not just the hospitality industry, to a lot of industries. I mean, you know, if we're shut down, there's no plumbers, there's no, we're not calling electricians, we're not calling, uh, you know, our cleaning service, we're not, you know, everybody's affected by this. It, it, it's a, you know, talk about trickle down effect. It's definitely the trickle down effect. Um, and it's just unfortunate, uh, you know, like only time will tell how if this was, you know, too much or not enough. I mean, we, no, nobody knows. You can't predict, predict the future. So uh, when it's all over with, you know, she just extended it to the 27th of April. And uh, I don't I it's going to be hard for people to sit home for a month. I, it's going to be hard. Now, you a multi-billionaire that's a, that's the way the world looks at you 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 got billions you know you got your yachts you know you're flying all over the world no you're a small yeah. business owner a am i correct yeah. correct literally i made you know i picked this company up and pretty much bankruptcy about a year and a half ago i took it over and all this last year is that i haven't made any money uh, we've just put money in the company, in the company to keep it afloat. Actually, I've run a charity for the last year and a half because that's all I've been doing is paying my employees and paying the people, my vendors. I haven't made any money. And then we just went through the three slowest months of the year, which is November, yeah. December, January. And we're coming out with no money in reserves. March is our, you know, I, I think I made $2,500 to the bottom line in February for seven restaurants. So yeah, I'm rich. <laughs> exactly. And there are Marxists out there who are saying that this is what you deserve for being a capitalist in the first place. And if anything, you need to come out with some money from somewhere to pay your employees for this entire month and a half off from work. How does that work for a small business owner? Do you have like a safe somewhere in the back that you keep extra cash or something? Oh yeah, you know today, which is not funny, is you know I you know they shut us down on Monday. I shut down myself, shut down on Monday before she even called for the complete shutdown because the only way my employees could you know I, I can't afford to to pay them if they're, if we're, if we're shut down. Uh, you know, takeout. All we're doing the more people that do takeout, we're just taking away from the pie. We're taking a piece of the pie from the people that are, that's what they do. So it's not fair to the other business. I hope they survive and they succeed. The, uh, you know, to, all week long, I was reaching out to city government, to my AMP, uh, to everybody, to the Chamber of Commerce, to the Restaurant Association, uh, trying to find some money because I didn't have enough money to meet payroll. I was literally $75,000 short to meet payroll. So I had to pull $75,000, my partners and I, out of our pockets to make sure our employees got paid today. Wow. You know, you, yeah. you know that's not the story that we're hearing uh, of small business owners around the country. What we're hearing is you all got cash, you'll make it through, they'll make it through. You were promised uh, along, well, not you personally, but business owners were promised in the District of Columbia that the bureaucracy cared that in the midst of all the chaos, your employees could count on the D.C. government to come through for them and meet their needs. Are they experiencing that right now? What are they experiencing? Oh, absolutely not. There's nothing. You know, I tried to pull money out of my retirement account 
to pay, and I couldn't even pull money out of my retirement because they got a freeze on the funds. I had to go out and take a high interest loan today, and to pay my employees. It didn't out of it wasn't out of my pocket. It was still, I, I don't have seventy five thousand dollars. I went through a whole year, so yeah. you know it's ridiculous. I, you know, government can't tell me anything of how they're going to help us if they're going to help us. You know, no. I'm shut down completely right now. I have no revenue coming in, and I have no money in the bank. None. Now, with no and revenue and no money in the bank, there are people that can, you're not the only one. Small businesses. No. There, are, there are hundreds of others just in your jurisdiction right now who are facing these particular trials and tribulations. However, uh, there is a bartender or a waitress or some other uh, chef who's counting on the fact that when Monday rolls around, there's going to be a paycheck there for them on the next week. And if you could speak, not on behalf of, but what many companies will be facing in urban America across the country on Monday morning. Look, I, my employees, I gave out paychecks today, and I was personally handing them out myself. I spoke with everybody. I know all my employees by first name. And I have 100 and almost 150 employees. And, you know, they're asking me, you know, they, well, they didn't ask. They're not asking when now because the mayor came out today and said it's the 25th and reopened. But who knows if that's going to happen. Uh, you know, some of my employees, you know, they're, they're having problems. They're getting denied by unemployment. They can't even navigate the website because it just keep, keeps kicking them out because there's so much traffic on it. Now, this is their last paycheck for me. I don't have any more money. And, you know, I will support them. I have whatever food I have in my freezers. Um, you know, I'm put, I keep it there because I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And if my employees need, they could come to me and I will feed them and, you know, but, whatever I can do. But... And there are lots of Americans that think of every business owner as a multi-billionaire, as, you know, just got wads of cash just sitting around. board for all businesses in the District of Columbia? No, it's across the board for all businesses in the District of Columbia. Um, all, even the trades. Uh, all the restaurants are in the same boat. I mean, I have a lot of friends in this industry throughout BC, and we're all facing the same as others. Yeah. Um, but you know, everybody thinks because we have seven restaurants, look, you know, three of my restaurants, you know, made money and three, four didn't make money last year. Uh, you know, so they just take from one another. We're trying to make them all viable. So it's just, you know, it's not just me. I mean, it's everybody. It's, it's every restaurant tour in the nation or in the country that's going through this same thing right now. They just closed, you know, the keys. So as they're not even going to let you into the Keys unless you're a resident in Florida, which is sort wow. of crazy. But it's um, you know it's not fun. You know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to stick it out. We're gonna try to survive. We're gonna see what's out there for us. But every day is an unpredictable day. I can't, I don't even have any money to use the downtime to fix things. You know wow. we, we're doing everything ourselves. All my produce today and my perishables I took to. Uh, uh, the flood house uh, because they're feeding all of uh, the industry people and and the and the people in, in DC for free. So we made three truckloads of two of my restaurants today. Again, that's something, that's something that we're not hearing about in terms of this. We're hearing government, government, government. We're not hearing what small businesses are doing. Now, it, it, were you asked by the mayor or any of the city council members or the ANCs? to provide additional counsel or additional advice regarding the planning of the next 30 days in the city of Washington for small businesses? No, we, all we get, I mean, from, from the Chamber of Commerce or champs, you know, we get emails, hey, you, you know, you're eligible to apply for a small business loan at 3.74%, uh, but this is all borrowed money. We have to borrow this money, we have to pay it back. It's not like there's a grant that's coming, you know, they're talking about it, you know, the government just gave, you know, what, 60 million to Boeing, uh, yeah. you know, the hotel, they bailed out the, the airlines, they bailed out the hotels, but, you know, 90% of all restaurants are small business restaurants. They're owned by small business owners, not large conglomerates. Now, 
you mentioned the fact that you're going to try to hold on and you're like a lot of other small business owners who are like gosh darn it what happens after june july um and you're trying to recover what are some of the things you're thinking about in terms of the recovery process are you going to cut staff uh or are you going to cut businesses what what exactly are your thoughts as you move forward Okay, we're experiencing a little bit of a technical difficulty here. Um, I really was looking forward to the answer to that particular question. Tom Johnson, managing partner of Hill Restaurant Group, LLC. Um, we were talking about what small businesses are facing at this particular juncture. And my hope is that we can get him back on the air if we can't. Uh, it's an idea about what we're going to be experiencing, what we're going to see in the next few months uh, for these particular owners of business. We're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back from the break, uh, we want to talk with you about public safety in the District of Columbia. Uh, we're not through yet, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much more uh, going on. And my prayers go out to each and every one of the small business owners and their employees over the next few weeks. God bless America.